Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Lifespeed webinar series. My name is Stephanie. I'll be around for the duration of the webinar just to facilitate any of the questions that you might have as we go along. Uh, we do expect that the webinar is going to take the entire hour, uh, but we will pause every now and then to take your questions as they come in. So if you would like to ask our presenters anything during the presentation, just go to the questions box to the right hand side of your screen and click on that button to type. Our hosts today are Mario Silvia and Raj Ndugla with a little guest appearance from our own Arlen Bankston presenting today on just how to navigate all these Agile certifications in 2018. Remember to submit those questions as we go along and we'll have a live Q&A when we close. And with that, I think we're getting ready to uh, go ahead and start here. Thank you, Stephanie. Good morning, everyone. This is Mario and we have Raj Arlen here with me. Um, so with, as we're gonna get started, you may know that there's a dizzying array of classes in a dynamic shifting certification landscape as it can be challenging to identify learning path appropriate for you as an individual looking for mastering a specific discipline or an organization looking to sustain and grow agility. So to help with this, we're gonna kick off this new year with a webinar and which hopes to attempt to shed some light on the learning roadmaps for three certifying bodies and all the recent changes made. So today's outcome after the webinar is to gain hopefully a better understanding for, their, for your learning options, whether you're an, uh, an individual or an organization uh, looking to grow your path or looking to sustain and grow your agility. So first thing, let's ask, so why Agile certifications today? There are a lot of them, and why are they uh, important? From an individual perspective, we see a few things kind of surface on why certifications could be important to you. One of them is if you want to grow deeper in your current role, taking a several certifications along a path from um, entry to advance is a good way to grow your skill set and get deeper into your, your job. There's another way where you can also plan to, if you're interested in actually moving from one role to another, taking a certification class and gaining the certification can give you great experience and show that you're able or interested in understanding the baseline of that new role and are willing to jump in. And then there's another one we've noticed that if you just are trying to get an understanding of, say, scaling, what are the different scaling um, frameworks out there, taking an overview certification class is one way to gain more skills and better direction to understand the differences and similarities of each of those. From an organization perspective, it's a slightly different perspective on why to take, or why do you think certifications are important for your employees? We've seen commonly that organizations will use uh, request their employees to take certifications as a way to grow their skills and knowledge to and hopefully to meet today's current demand or future business needs. It also, we see that they, it helps for the develop a shared understanding and expectations for the roles and skills that they currently have. And this is especially true for when they're trying to hire new talent to come into the organization. Having certifications as a way of common vernacular is, is helpful. We've also seen a, a third way organizations will like to use certifications, and that's sometimes gain, setting themselves to goals, such as we want to have 500 scrum masters and 200 product owners by year end, because they firmly believe in those certification training, that those are great ways to baseline those roles and those skills. Hello everyone, this is Arlen. I uh, wanted to say a few words about how you go about selecting between these frameworks, uh, in particular, whether you're, you're an individual or you're an organization. The uh, slide that you're seeing here is actually a tool from our Agile Leadership Academy, and the tool is meant to help people select between scaling frameworks in particular, uh, but the same logic largely applies whether you're talking about scaling frameworks uh, or Scrum or other basic team-level frameworks. Some of the core facets that you might consider are these. What sort of business are you in? Do you have to rapidly innovate, uh, build lots of new products? Do things change very rapidly? Uh, you know, are you looking for uh, the, the creation of a lot of new services? Uh, or perhaps you're in a bit more steady state industry. You need reliability, you need stability. Uh, you need to be able to perhaps uh, adapt a bit more than you did in the past, but your organization is not really one that's uh, driving for heavy innovation. 
If you're more on the, uh, you know, if you will, the lightweight, innovative side of things, you might hew a bit more closely to methods like uh, perhaps the lean startup uh, or business agility ideas. Uh, whereas if you're in a, a little bit more of the stable, large scale thing, you might look a little bit more towards frameworks such as the scaled agile framework uh, or a little bit more settled and complete uh, comprehensive ideas like that. There's also the notion of how large scale and complex your work is. Uh, and similarly, of course, if you're scaling to very large projects, the scaling frameworks come into play. Uh, if you're not, you're probably better off, uh, well, not scaling. It's uh, a lot of organizations try to descale as is an alternative approach here and purposefully try to make projects smaller. So that's a consideration as well. There's a notion of how adventure people are. Uh, while most of these frameworks that we're going to be introducing have, in, in fact, advanced courses, some of them are a bit more complete there than others. Uh, so you'll find that uh, the level of, of depth that your people already have, uh, to some degree, will infer which framework is right for you. Um, just as a side note, for instance, IC Agile has a lot of uh, lower level role specific training, uh, whereas, say, you know, if you're looking more at the higher levels for portfolio program managers, uh, the methods like safe for better uh, and currently still the scrum alliance has some of the best team level offerings uh, how much support do you need what this is really saying and these latter two questions are somewhat similar uh, how much support internally do you have is one question of course if you've got people already trying one method like you're, you're using scrum internally or you've already been using safe then uh, it may obviously be easiest to simply follow that path because you've already got support internally for it um, from an industry perspective, this is really considering whether you need a, a lot of training and support and coaching and consulting around a given method. Uh, some of them are simply more supportive than others. They're, they've been around longer. There are more people who know them. Uh, so it's easier to find help when you need it. Uh, these are some of the common considerations that you might uh, concern yourself with when you're looking to choose among them. And with that, we're preparing to go into some details uh, on the methods, in particular, that we as Lightspeed offer. And these are basically the three orange frameworks you see there highlighted. That is the Scrum Alliance offerings, and we'll go through the breadth of those. Uh, IC Agile, or the International Consortium of Agile, and the Scale Agile Institute, which is uh, the, the folks who run the SAFE uh, program as well. It's worth mentioning there are, of course, other certification frameworks. Uh, the PMI has the PMI ACP, which covers Scrum, Kanban, and XP. Um, that's also not a bad one for advanced practitioners. And Scrum.org is very similar to the Scrum Alliance. Um, it's, it's run by Ken Schwaber, who's the uh, one of the two founders of Scrum. Um, and again, offers largely parallel courses. So there it's, it's uh, in great degree a matter of which organization is already aligned with. And with that, I will. So we're going to take a quick poll just now based on that. Um, which certifying body are you most interested in learning about today? We'll wait just a few seconds for these responses to come in. All right, and that's just about everybody. So I'll go ahead and close the poll now. All right, thank you, Stephanie. Okay, uh, hello everyone, my name is Raj and I'll be walking us through the recent changes um, in the learning paths from Scrum Alliance. And as Arlen mentioned, uh, it's a venerable old uh, institutions with a governing body that's been uh, around a while and arguably has the most number of certificates uh, in, in the Agile certification space, uh, which is a Scrum Alliance. And the, recently they've um, introduced uh, significant changes to their learning paths, which is what I wanna sort of um, expose uh, the audience to next. Um, the learning paths that we'll be exploring, uh, essentially there are three distinct paths, if you will. Uh, perhaps uh, a lot of you have uh, heard of the Certified Scrum Master, which is uh, the foundational um, a course, if you will, that exposes uh, newcomers to Agile, and specifically it's centered around the Scrum framework. So you learn the foundational aspects of Agile and uh, the Scrum frameworks uh, <clears throat> roles and uh, and the practices. 
what's what's new um, this year is the introduction of the advanced certified Scrum Master um, class, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and there's also um, a new competency-based certification, which is the Certified Scrum Professional CSP. SM, which is again new this year. Um, in prior years, there was the competency-based track, which was just a certified Scrum professional CSP um, with no uh, uh, appendix such as the SM and so forth. But now we have a specific uh, track. Uh, there's also similar changes on the product side of things. And perhaps folks have uh, been exposed to the certified uh, Scrum product owner for the product uh, focus professionals, which is a foundational um, course around product ownership and what it means to be a product owner um, and so forth. And um, the Scrum Alliance has introduced um, an advanced offering on that path, which is the Advanced Certified Scrum Master or the ACSP. We'll talk a little bit about that. And um, in the same vein as the Certified Scrum Prof uh, 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 professional Scrum Master, there's a certified uh, Scrum Professional Product Owner, the CSPPO, which is again a new uh, a new track. Again, competency-based, and I'll talk a little bit about what it means uh, to acquire a competency-based uh, certification. Uh, last but not least, uh, Scrum Alliance also has a technically oriented uh, learning track. Um, the Certified Scrum Developer, the CSD, has been around for a while. Uh, it's the only uh, technically oriented uh, a course in uh, the Scrum Alliance's um, uh, catalog of classes. Um, the advanced CSD and the certified Scrum professional for, uh, for developers, they are still in the planning stages. So for those certificates who have already a CSD, the foundational class, um, then their path would still be the CSP, uh, the Certified Scrum Professional, and talk a little bit about that. Now, when and uh, when the advanced classes in CSD are going to be uh, awarded, we don't know the date yet, but all we know is that they're being planned. So there's a foundational set of classes along these three learning paths. Uh, there's the new advanced classes and the competency-based certifications. And then finally, there's the the higher elevated certifications, this is for those uh, pursuing a guide or mentor level certifications, which is the CST Certified Scrum Trainer, uh, for those who are inclined towards uh, mentoring, teaching, um, Scrum Alliance, uh, CSM classes or uh, product owner classes, that's the CST. And then there's a couple of uh, paths for those pursuing uh, facilitation, coaching at the team level or the enterprise level, which is the CEC and the CTC. So these are the elevated certifications. So this is the broad spectrum of uh, classes and the learning paths uh, for for the uh, for our learners and the audience. So I'm going to just spend a few minutes talking about each of these paths and what the learning requirements are and the fees and so forth. Uh, by the way, this is a two-year journey. What I don't necessarily mean to imply that um, if, a, if a particular learner already has industry experience um, having applied Scrum and Agile within their organizations for several years, it doesn't mean they have to wait another two years to seek the advanced uh, learning uh, certifications. If you already have the experience, you're more than welcome to take one or more uh, classes consecutively and still reach the advanced um, um, elevated certifications, right? But the, the intent here is for novice learners, it is indeed a two year journey. Having said that, <clears throat> let's sort of uh, deep dive into each of those uh, tracks. So I'm gonna start with um, the Certified Scrum Master uh, class, the CSM has been around for a long, long time. And this establishes the foundational knowledge of Agile and the Scrum framework specifically, appropriate for all looking to learn a little bit about Agile and Scrum, and there's no uh, prerequisite. This is, uh, uh, this is open to all interested in learning about this. And this is an in, uh, instructional two-day in-class uh, course. And, and once at the end of the class, there's an exam that they have, uh, the learners have to take, and the certification is valid for a couple of years, and there's a $100 renewal fee. So I think a lot of uh, folks probably are already aware of this class. 
So what's new, as I'd mentioned, um, starting late last year and early into this year is this advanced certified Scrum Master class, the ACSM. It requires um, that the learners already have a CSM as well as 12 months of actual work experience um, in, in an in a adult Scrum uh, setting. Uh, this can, uh, this certification can be acquired in a couple of ways. It's a relatively new course. So there's a couple of different flavors in how one might um, acquire the certification. Uh, the most straightforward way perhaps is to do a two day in-person uh, course, uh, but there are some uh, CSTs, that's uh, Certified Scrum Trainers, who are offering a different flavor of the advanced CSM where it could be a combination of a one day um, instruction-based learning uh, augmented with uh, mentoring calls uh, every few months um, and uh, homework and, and things uh, and things of that nature. So, but there are also those CSTs who are offering this as a straight up two day uh, um, in class uh, course as well. Uh, but it does require, as I mentioned, the CSM as well as a year's worth of actual working up, um, uh, experience applying some of these foundational um, skills at your workplace. Uh, <clears throat> the, the next level along this journey would be to seek the Certified Scrum Professional, the CSP in the Scrum Master Track. Again, this is new. Uh, prior to this year, it used to be just a Certified uh, Scrum Professional, the CSP. Now it's oriented more towards this particular learning track. Um, what it requires is um, a completion of the advanced CSM and another year's worth of, um, or two years worth of role specific work experience, having applied some of these skills that you've learned in the foundational classes and the advanced classes in your work setting. In addition, um, uh, potential aspirants to the certification also have to accrue some um, Scrum Alliance prescribed education units. It could be present attending webinars, presentations, uh, uh, attending conferences. There's a host of different ways in which you can acquire these Scrum education units. Uh, so, but those are the prerequisites um, to sort of uh, applying for the CSPSM class. As you can see, um, the the fee the the renewal fees for the is slightly higher than your foundational classes, but also keep in mind that if you are applying for some of these advanced uh, renewals, your foundational uh, classes along the journey are automatically renewed as well. You don't pay a separate fee for that. Okay. So similar to uh, the the previous learning path, so we have um, the Scrum Alliance offers a path to certified uh, Scrum professionals in the product ownership space. Um, the CSPO is the foundational class. Um, and much like the CSM, there's really no prerequisite. It's really ideal for those who are um, focused on the value discovery side of things, on the product side of things, um, two-day in-person class, and the advanced offering in that space, which is again, brand new uh, late last year, early this year, uh, is the advanced CSPO. Uh, much like the advanced CSM, you could, uh, depending on who's delivering the training, which learning organization is providing the training, it could be a two-day in-person class, or it could be uh, a combination of in-person training as well as um, uh, mentoring over several months. So it just depends on the learning organization providing the certification. Um, so the prerequisites is, is having the CSPO and relevant work experience, a year's worth of relevant uh, work experience in that specific domain. And similar to what I had described with the Scrum, Ma uh, the Scrum Mastery path, uh, there is a new designation for those on the product side seeking a professional certification. This is a competence-based certification, the CSPPO. Uh, this requires a completion of the, uh, the, a a the advanced CSPO as well as two years worth of uh, role specific uh, experience along with accruing um, 40 Scrum education units. So the pricing structure is similar to what I described with the previous learning path. Um, last but not least, the, the learning path for those more technically oriented specifically um, on the, on the uh, engineering side of things, 
There, the foundational class is a certified Scrum developer, and this class uh, remains largely unchanged from um, what they had in the past. This is definitely a, a, a more a rigorous um, foundational class compared to uh, the CSP or the CSM in that it requires um, three days of uh, in-person uh, training, which is not just lecture. There's a lot of uh, coding uh, activities involved in this. It is a technical course, and as such, the prerequisite is uh, this is probably ideal for technical team members, either the developers, uh, test automation in your, uh, engineers, or those who have some coding experience, because um, in-class coding uh, is absolutely a prerequisite for this class. Um, so one, one thing to note is just completing the three days of the in-class uh, engineering-focused training uh, is not sufficient uh, to garner the CSD designation. In addition to the three-day engineering component, um, certificates have to have two additional days of Scrum-related training, and the easiest way to uh, garner those uh, two additional days is to take perhaps a CSM. Uh, if not, there's uh, additional ways in which you can sort of garner the uh, two additional days of Scrum-related training. So in total, uh, the audience needs five days of instruction in order to uh, be awarded the Certified Scrum Developer uh, designation. And again, nothing new. This has always been the case with the CSD track. Um, what's um, <clears throat> in being planned for the technical um, journey for for the uh, towards the certified scrum pro, uh, professional uh, it's still being laid out the advanced classes are still being planned by scrum alliance so for now as of jan 1 2018 uh, the advancement uh, opportunities for those with the csd is you can still make avail of the csp the certified scrum professional um, so again this is only for those certificates who already have uh, just the CSD. So they can still make avail of the CSP path. And I've uh, noted also on the slide uh, the requirements, um, the Scrum Alliance sort of mandates in order for those uh, certificates to seek the, uh, the professional level certification. Okay. As I mentioned again, don't know when the advanced CSD class are being offered, but we know it's on their uh, radar. So um, Arlen will share a little bit about the guide level certifications. Hello, everyone. Arlen here again. So one of the most popular uh, guide level certifications that people attempt to pursue is the CST, the Certified Scrum Trainer, which is, of course, uh, allows you to train Scrum classes like the Scrum Master and Product Owner class. Uh, the uh, prerequisite for this primarily is the CSP. Uh, it used to be the, the base CSP, but now they've split it into the two different paths and eventually three. Uh, you need a CSP or a CSPSM or a CSPPO. Uh, you need actually to have at least uh, 70 SEUs uh, for this particular role uh, to, in order to get to get the CSP um, and to get the CST. Uh, and you have to actually have, have trained a number of people. So there's a good bit of co-training here that is necessary. Um, it says you, you've taught as a co-trainer with the CST, but in fact, uh, in reality, most of the people who get the CST have trained with at least five or six people, uh, often multiple on multiple occasions. Uh, so it's worth noting here that this is a very uh, competitive certification. There are just over 230 CSTs in the world today, um, so that gives you a sense of, of how you know heavily uh, sought after that that role is. And as you note down there at the bottom, the fees for this are, are significantly higher, uh, $5,000 per year. Uh, I'll also note you've got the certified team coach. Uh, this is, of course, a little bit a, a lower level guide certification. Uh, for this particular one, uh, you primarily have to demonstrate that you have the necessarily necessary knowledge. Uh, so this is a matter of essentially filling out some templates and discussing uh, the experience you have as an Agile coach, and then there is a, a $500 annual renewal for that one. Um, there are also not a whole lot of CTCs out there, so this one is uh, still remains interesting, perhaps for that reason. That uh, you know, when, when you see people applying for positions as coaches, 
Uh, quite a lot of them, of course, have things like the certified Scrum Master, but very few have these higher level certifications. Uh, so as that gets to be a more competitive job, uh, you know, perhaps something worth looking into here. The highest level among these guide level certifications uh, on the coaching side is the CEC or the Certified Enterprise Coach. Uh, and this is meant to be a more organizational uh, coach, if you will. So they're expecting a little bit more experience here. Uh, I will say this role is actually even more rare than the CST. Uh, there are fewer than 100 of these in the world today. Uh, so you've, you, you don't have a whole lot of them. And it's also uh, perhaps interesting to note that CECs uh, can in fact themselves mint the base level certifications for the Scrum Alliance. What I mean is a CEC can actually grant people the Scrum Master designation and they can grant people the product owner designation. Uh, so that that is an interesting facet that they've got some of the capabilities uh, of a CST, uh, but the notion there is they're looking for you to do it internally at a company rather than as a public offering. Uh, so CSTs are people who want to hit the streets and train classes primarily. CECs uh, quite often end up being people who actually are either they're high level consultants traveling to various companies or they're embedded within a company, uh, perhaps the latter being the more frequent of the two situations. What you're seeing here are um, just some, some numbers about how many certificates there are in each of these areas. Uh, so as you can see, you got uh, north of half a million Scrum Masters. There have actually been more than that trained. Uh, so I believe that the number you're seeing here is actually the current active holders of the Scrum Master designation. Um, and as you can see there, of course, the advanced Scrum Master class is pretty new, so you're still under 100 there. Um, and you'll, you'll hear more about this, but we'll be offering, uh, as Lightspeed, an advanced Scrum Master class in the next couple of months, uh, with, you know, if any of you are interested in that. Uh, the CSD, you can see not not a ton of those either, just under 6,000. Uh, the product owner certification has been rising rapidly. Uh, we at Lightspeed have seen uh, on a number of occasions over the past couple of years, the size of our product owner classes exceed those of our Scrum Master classes, which has certainly been an unusual happening, uh, you know, historically speaking. So, you know, the CSPO, I think, is something that more and more is being recognized by the industry, being requested by recruiters. Uh, and something to set those of you apart who perhaps are more interested in the product management side of the equation. Uh, and lastly, you can see there, likewise, uh, the CSP is still a, you know, a relatively, uh, you know, rare designation, if you will, just, just over 6,000 of them in the world. Uh, and uh, I think it's also worth noting that this is under a much easier program historically than the current one. Uh, the current one, of course, is, as Raj outlined, there requires essentially three two-day training classes uh, and a good bit of experience on top of that to boot, uh, whereas the previous one just required 70 credit hours, which you could gather in a variety of fashions of, you know, going to training or conferences or reading on your own and, and so on. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit harder to get a CSP now, which perhaps might mean it's, it's going to mean more in the future uh, for those of you looking to, uh, you know, set yourselves apart from your peers. Uh, just two more things are on the Scrum Alliance side, and these are the leadership level certifications. They recently launched what they call the CAL program, the Certified Agile Leadership Program, and there are just two levels of this one. The CAL one uh, is a uh, essentially a two-day class, much as the other Scrum Alliance classes are set up. Uh, so you come in, you take two days of training, and you get the CAL one certification. The CAL two is a uh, more of a practitioner certification. So here they're expecting you to have a demonstrable and demonstrated experience. Uh, specifically speaking, there is an experience report that you must create, which consists of the three areas that you see here of advanced education, peer workshop, and validated practice. Uh, I'm sorry, those are actually the, those are the aspects of the program. The topics for the Cal2 are, uh, let's see if I can recall, the uh, changing role of a leader, uh, agility at a leadership level, I think, and, and one other topic. But there are uh, high level topics for, for leaders on the Scrum. Uh, the, uh, you know, in a Scrum organization, if you will. The CAL2, uh, you can actually get through a class as well, in addition to the experience report, but not many people are offering it that way. Um, and this leads us to our next slide here. Uh, Lightspeed for the past couple of years has run a program called the Agile Leadership Academy. Um, it consists of four, basically one and a half day classes, more or less. Uh, so each quarter there is a workshop. The workshop is one day. But, uh, and that's an on-site thing. Prior to the workshop, the day before, participants come in and we do a site visit to an Agile company. 
Uh, so that's, uh, you know, a few hours they then return and we have some manner of reception. Uh, and then the next day there's a workshop. So these, these sessions are spaced by quarter because the idea is in between each session, the leaders are beginning to put some of their plans into practice. Uh, we have mentor calls every month in between those sessions, uh, one hour long mentor calls. Uh, so three hours in between each session total for each person. And during that time, uh, the leaders can, of course, share how their plans are progressing and they can adapt them uh, with some guidance from uh, leaders like us. The Cal Level 1 certi certification you get from the first ALA session and the Cal Level 2, at this point, you certainly get at the end of the program. Uh, for those who are interested in getting it more rapidly, we also have an accelerated program where we can help you write your experience report and get it done a little more quickly. And in that case, you can have it as soon as the second session. Um, so for those of you interested in the leadership certifications, that's the way it works. And with this, back over to Mario. Okay, thanks. Before we dive into Skilled Agile, we want to take a pause here, knowing there was a lot of Scrum Alliance information shared, open up for a couple questions, and we'll pass this back to Stephanie for help with this. Yeah, so we do have a couple of questions here, and I'll keep these a little short just for time's sake. Um, a couple of you have asked if the deck will be sent out afterwards. The answer to that is yes. Um, you will receive the recording of the entire webinar um, from the GoToWebinar platform following the close. If you're interested in having the actual deck itself, just send me a little message here in the questions box, and I will personally send that out to you afterwards. Um, the other questions that we have here, Let's start out with uh, some easy ones. Are there any exams required for Scrum Alliance? So uh, this is Arlen. Yes, for uh, just one of the classes at this point, and that's Certified Scrum Master class. So at this point, they do not have examinations for any of the other classes. Great, and um, if, if they end up coming up with any exams for these classes, we will certainly reflect those on our Lifespeed website as well. Um, the next question here is, if I don't renew my certification, am I still able to say that I'm a Scrum Master or Product Owner? Uh, the answer is basically yes. Uh, what, what's going to happen is if you don't renew your certification, and at this point you have to do that every two years with the Scrum Alliance for, for most of the certifications, as you've seen, a few of them are annual uh, renewals. Uh, but effectively what you're renewing uh, is also your Scrum Alliance profile. Uh, so fundamentally, let's say that you let your profile lapse and you were to come back, you know, a couple of years later, you could pay to renew your profile and it would go live again. Uh, but before you did that, people would not be able to find you on the Scrum Alliance website and confirm that you are indeed a certified Scrum Master. Uh, so in other words, if you get it at some point, you don't really lose it, uh, but you become more or less ghosted because you're, nobody's able to find you anymore uh, if you don't keep it up to date. Actually, one other comment there, when you get, when you take any of the additional classes from the Scrum Alliance, it extends your profile. So if you say you take a Scrum Master class, uh, you get a two-year Scrum Alliance membership along with that class. Uh, let's say, you know, a, a year after that, you took a product owner class from the Scrum Alliance as well. Uh, what would happen is it would extend your membership by another two years. So at that point, you would have, you know, basically three years left uh, to get. So that's the way it works for, for having multiple classes. Thanks, Arlen. And we'll take one more Scrum Alliance related question here, uh, and then we'll save the rest for later. Uh, can we take the CSP CM, or, sorry, SM, without a CSM if we are a CSM with a good amount of experience? No. No, you, you got to take them in order. So you would have to take the advanced CSM first. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna shift now to focus on um, Scaled Agile for organizations looking to grow beyond the team level. Um, Scaled Agile is one of the popular scaling frameworks out there today. Others you might have heard of, which would be less DAD or Nexus. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about Scaled Agile. It seems to be very popular, uh, across, especially in the United States and across the globe. Um, so there's two things when you typically hear, you hear about the Scaled Agile framework. But behind the Scaled Agile framework is the Scaled Agile Institute. It's the organization that obviously provides the framework safe, as well as provides all of the courseware, certification, and community that enables the Scaled Agile framework to be successful. 
The Scaled Agile Framework is a freely available knowledge base. It's intended to guide enterprises in scaling lean and agile practices. And it's, the framework seeks to address the problems encountered when scaling beyond a single team. So for an organization who is trying to grow beyond a single team and are ha struggling, Scaled Agile is trying to address your problems. SAFE promotes alignment, collaboration, and delivery across large numbers of teams. It was developed by and for practitioners, and it leverages three primary bodies of knowledge, soft, Agile software development, lean product development, and systems thinking. The primary reference for the Scaled Agile framework is this big picture view, which is really how um, it's trying to depict how work flows from product management through governance, program teams, and development teams out to customers. With the collaboration of others in the Agile community, the framework has continued to be developed and released in the public domain. Uh, right with you, and we're seeing here the latest release, version 4.5, which was released in June 2017. Now, the courseware that has been updated for 4.5 um, is inclusive of the continuous delivery pipeline, which is one of the major components in this latest version. So all the course for now has been updated to teach and talk about continuous delivery pipeline and a DevOps culture. In addition to the big picture here, SAFE provides an implementation roadmap. And this is basically describes the strategy and it provides an ordered set of activities for organizations who want to embrace SAFE. This is a way to go. Um, today, we're gonna look across this roadmap and focus on training in, in three distinct areas. So first of all, we're gonna look at two courses when you an organization reaches a tipping point and they feel like they're, this is the framework, the scan framework they wanna choose and wanna to try to implement. The first will be around training your agile change agents who will help you through the implementation of your safe of implementation as well as training leaders. Then you'll will, organization typically will try to define in its organization, what kind of value and what kind of solutions we need to deliver, create a plan for that. The second area we're gonna talk about of training is when we have identified what they call an agile release train. It's the vehicle and safe that actually builds and delivers your solutions. So the second classes are really about how do we train all the individuals who will be joining um, and participating on the train to deliver value. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit about as an organization continues through the implementation roadmap and gets to a sustained improvement um, step, which is really the final step. Um, and there's two classes that SAFE has introduced more recently uh, for advancement on growth. And those are here that you see. So we're gonna start first with training your change agents. <clears throat> what they prescribe is this implementing SAFE course. It's a four day course. And it's for people who you are, as an organization, are going to be having them lead this implementation or partnering with others to lead this organization. They're the key individuals who are going to be help driving this from beginning to end, the implementation roadmap, that is. So in this class, um, they're going to be learning how to coach the programs, launch agile release trains or arts. Um, building the continuous delivery pipeline in a DevOps culture and up to even to empowering a lean portfolio. They will learn in the first two days how to actually teach SAFE to others. And the second two days was actually a focus exclusively on what it takes to be successful when you implement SAFE in the enterprise. The certification um, exam is pretty interesting and after taking the exam and becoming an SPC, there's a couple of things that open up to you. There's a wealth of toolkits that are enabled to you as you become an SPC, toolkits to help you with everything through the implementation roadmap, which is pretty powerful. Um, in addition to that, SPCs can teach the next four classes I'm gonna to talk to you about. This is kind of one reason why you can notice the renewal fee uh, is a little bit high, a little bit uh, definitely steeper than the rest of the um, certification renewal fees. And that's particularly because of all the tool sets and capability that are open to you once you pass this exam. Once you've taught your change agents and they've become certified SPCs, the next level is to teach your leaders. And this is really to get a baseline foundation to get leadership on board behind this and able to speak uh, at a depth 
of what they are signing up to do and what they are championing to do for their organization. Uh, this is a two-day course, and the attendees learn principles and practices of the framework. They learn how to execute and release value through the Agile release train. They also learn, importantly, what it means to lead a Lean Agile transformation. Um, and like I said, once again, this class can be taught by an SPC. You'll notice here that the renewal fee is very different, um, and that's just for this uh, certification. You don't get, obviously, the toolkits and the ability to teach other classes. This is more of a high level. With um, SAFE, all of the certifications are valid for one year after passing the certification exam. Once you've taught both of your change agents and your leaders, like I said, you want to kind of go back into the organization with your SBCs, identify your value streams, and from there, pull out your agile release trains, which will be the vehicle that will deliver and build the complex solutions to meet your business needs. After identifying one, you want to create an implementation plan. Your SBCs can help you with that. And then it's really around a focus on, let's train all the individuals on the train, the first train. The first training is another leading SAFE class, and it's really targeted for your stakeholders. These will be the individuals who will be um, participating on the train, but won't be the core team uh, team makeup of either product owner, scrum master, or the team. These will be everyone else who needs to get a baseline of what SAFE is and how they're going, to, how their involvement will be on the Agile release train. So the first thing we're going to dive into uh, when teaching is the product owner. So the product owner is a two-day course, and it's uh, traditionally you would send not only your product owners, uh, you would send your business analysts, anyone who's responsible for. Um, writing requirements, uh, responsible for customer impact of the solution, those will fit into this class. The class covers how to deliver value on the train, what does it mean to be a product owner, product manager roles. You will also learn how to apply lean thinking to write epics, break them down into features and stories, and plan and execute iterations or sprints. That's another name for sprints and say is iteration. And then plan the program increment. The PI planning event and the program increments are um, cadence-based planning and the cadence of what uh, a train uses to actually deliver value. The next class after teaching the product, oh, you can notice that the renewal fee is also $100. The next class will be teaching the Scrum Masters. What's interesting about the Scrum Master, Safe Scrum Master course, it tries to address two things. One, people new to the Scrum Master role as well as people who are ready existing scrum masters but they have never had um, played in a safe environment so this class will actually teach existing scrum masters how to actually be a scrum master in safe i think that's really interesting that they're able to do both because um, there are different dynamics if you think about it this renewal fee is also 100. once you've trained the product owner and the scrum master what is left to train are the teams. Safe for teams. This class is also a two-day class, and it focuses on trying to teach what is and how to deliver agile value through an agile release train. It also tries to effectively teach you how to perform your role uh, using Scrum, Kanban, and XP. And the teams learn how to write stories, break down features, plan and execute iterations, and plan program increments. This is a combination of Scrum, Kanban, XP 101, at the, in addition to how do those fit into a, a safe cadence and a program increment. So it's slightly both. It also goes into teaching you, all three of these classes are covering as well, that new information around continuous delivery and DevOps. And just to remind you, the SPC can teach all three of these classes. OK, once you've gone through Launch, you know, launching your first train, you're coaching your first train. Safe, the next two classes are really further down when you've gotten to launching more trains, you're maturing in your safe adoption. And we're going to talk briefly about what are those two advanced courses when you get to a moment of sustain and improve. The first one is a safe release train engineer course. And it's geared towards uh, enabling existing RTEs who've been in the role for a while, giving them further in-depth knowledge on the role and helping them um, focus more on their facilitation abilities, leading, uh, coaching and mentoring Scrum Masters, and doing better at plant PI planning. 
And then the second course is a, an advanced course for Scrum Masters. This is just to take you one step further in the delivery path for, say, for Scrum Masters and teaches you more around facilitation as well as introduces into scalable engineering and DevOps practices as well as how do you support interactions with your architects, product management, and other critical stakeholders. So that's pretty much it for Scaled Agile Framework and the trainings. So now we'll move on to IC. Oh, before we do that, let's do like we did with Scrum Alliance and open the floor up for a few questions. Yeah, we do have a couple of questions here. And again, for the sake of time, I'm only going to go through a couple of these, but we will get to the rest of them at the end. Um, let's see, the first one is, what is the prerequisite, if any, to take the SAFE 4.5 class? Uh, prerequisite, there's not really prerequisite. The only prerequisites you can see, um, if you went to the Skilled Agile site, there's just some prerequisites around maybe taking the exam. So if you are studying for an SBC, it would benefit you if you've had some experience in um, Agile, in Lean, in some other places. So I think nothing hardcore as long as they're just trying to guide you. If you're really new, familiar with Agile and you don't really understand it, uh, maybe this would be better if you took like a, a safe essay class first. All right. And the other question we wanted to get to here is, I already have my CSM. Should I also take a safe class? If your organization is exploring to use to to use it safe as as a scaling framework for itself, or you're just curious, like we talked about from the individual slide, uh, I would recommend to get the foundations of what is safe, uh, taking the leading safe course, and you could potentially get the uh, SA certification if you'd like. It's not required, but the leading safe course would give you an overview and, and a breadth of what the scale agile framework is about. All right, thanks, Mario. Okay, let's move on to IC Agile. All right, uh, this is Raj again. So we'll be covering over the next 10 minutes, um, just so that we have enough room for uh, additional questions, uh, one other uh, certification and accred accreditation body, which is the International Consortium for Agile, or IC Agile. Um, so unlike the, the two other governing bodies that we looked at, Scrum Alliance and, and uh, Scaled Agile uh, Institute, IC Agile deliberately does not uh, prescribe a, spe a specific framework or method. They're more interested in setting the learning objectives for what it means for an individual or an organization to be agile. Uh, and they're pretty agnostic to what specific framework or vehicle you might choose uh, um, as an individual and organization to be agile. So th that's uh, immediately, you'll see that in, in the various uh, classes that we look at, very different than uh, the, the previous two uh, governing bodies which are attached to a specific framework. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so let me quickly go through the fan or the peacock feather that I call this. This is a broad spe a spectrum of all the different learning paths that an individual based on their role uh, might choose to uh, pursue uh, all the way from the foundational uh, mindset aspects to seeking mastery in one or more of these domains. So IC Agile offers three levels of certifications across these various domains that you see. Um, what they call professional is really the foundational uh, uh, certifications. The expert level obviously is expertise, uh, demonstrating expertise in that specific domain. And this is competence based. It's not just about in-class training. And last but not least, there's this notion of an IC Agile master designation and the, uh, the, the path to uh, getting the master certification is still being uh, laid out by uh, the IC uh, Agile uh, founders. So that's imminent, we just don't know when, but there is that master level uh, track as well. But for now, what is available are these various learning objectives across different domains where you can get the professional certifications, the foundational certifications, uh, all the way to um, the expert certification. So let's explore each of these. Uh, oh, before I go there, I wanna quickly mention, um, right now there's about 65,000 uh, certificate holders across the various uh, uh, disciplines. 
Um, I have reached out to IC Seattle to get a further breakdown. Uh, if for those who are interested, uh, and I may have that answer for you uh, that we'll post. But interestingly, just like with the other uh, tracks, the expert designation, uh, there are fewer than 100 uh, experts uh, in one or more of these domains uh, across the world. So for those interested in reaching the, um, the higher level certification, is something to keep in mind uh, as an aspirational goal. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is uh, Stephanie, our moderator, I think, has already provided uh, the audience with um, a PDF that describes in greater detail each of these courses. I don't think we'll have the time here to explore the details and the learning objectives of each of these uh, classes, but it should already be available to you. Right. So. Very quickly, so how do I get started with, with, with uh, uh, pursuing professional certification with IC Agile? First and foremost, the Agile fundamentals uh, is appropriate for anyone who's new to Agile, uh, which, get, which garners this in-class training, which provides um, typically two two-day training that provides the ICP designation, which essentially readies the audience for uh, further exploration of any other um, learning programs within the uh, auspices of IC Agile. And it's also, it, uh, I should mention that I may get some questions where people say, uh, but I already have the CSM or something else. Do I still need to take the fundamentals class? The answer is not necessarily uh, there. So you can take an exam uh, that IC Agile uh, uh, provides which establishes your basic understanding of agile fundamentals and that way you that's one way to get the icp designation once you have the icp designation is what will let you explore all the other domain specific uh, classes i'm going to quickly go through um, what those other domains are um, a quick note on the fee so unlike the other uh, governing bodies, there is no notion of certifi uh, uh, certifications expiring. So there is no notion of a renewal fee. Uh, and for those pursuing the expert track in any one of the domains, it's a one-time cost of uh, $1,275 US uh, as of uh, this month. So if they change, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Uh, <clears throat> and usually for the specific uh, professional level designations, depending on which member organization is offering the classes, they typically roll the certification costs into your training costs as well, right? But there is no renewal fee. So having said that, the business agility track is, uh, is a track that explores uh, what it means for an organization to be responsive and value focused uh, and and in that theme there's the foundations uh, of business agility class the icp baf which is a very foundational class um, and this is a track that ic agile is elaborating uh, uh, much more um, deliberately in the sense that it is broad based it's not tied to a specific uh, the software industry for example and to that and what you see is you have um an, an advanced class like the agile talent which is exploring the hr side of agility uh, there's also a new course there the agile leadership um, track a professional certification uh, which is exploring the leadership aspects uh, probably ideal for managers and aspiring leaders within an organization Right now, there is no expert um, competence-based um, certificate available for the business agility track, but it's coming soon. I don't know when, but it's coming soon. And I've also listed uh, uh, the audience level that this particular domain is appropriate to. Okay. I also want to mention that um, classes in um, uh, within business business agility on marketing. Uh, are imminent and they're going to be appearing uh, soon. Right now, uh, the the domain specific class here is really around HR, which is the Agile Talent uh, class. Um, the the other track, if you will, is um, the Enterprise Agile Coaching track. Needless to say, uh, uh, appropriate for 
uh, program team level coaches and uh, team facilitators, anybody aspiring to the role of a coach or mentor or facilitator, this might be appropriate. And there's two class professional level certifications within this track, uh, Agility in the Enterprise and Coaching Agile trans, uh, Transitions. So while there is a logical progression uh, in terms of these two classes, uh, IC Agile doesn't prescribe and mandate that in order to get, for example, the ICP CAT, that uh, the learners have to have the ICP ENT. Uh, so they are laid out as a logical progression, but there's no mandate to say that you have to have one before the other. Okay, so learners can choose uh, whatever class is appropriate for their uh, learning journey. And as I mentioned again, the details of these various classes uh, are obviously available on the IC ISIL website, whose link we are going to share with you, as well as uh, the PDF that is available for you to sort of peruse at your leisure the details of each of these classes. <clears throat> The competence-based uh, certificate within the Enterprise Agile Coaching, uh, the ICEC, uh, this is not, you don't get this by just taking some uh, classes. You, uh, this is, it's a pretty rigorous process, much like some of the other elevated certifications in, in the other governing bodies. Uh, there's a review panel involved. You gotta do live dem uh, demonstrations and show your competence um, in that specific domain in order to be ordered uh, in order to be awarded the expert designation so uh, moving on to the next track uh, the product ownership track uh, as the name implies this is probably uh, useful for the analysts and the product owners and team members focused on the product side of things. Uh, and again there's two classes available here the uh, business value analysis and enterprise product ownership again no it's a logical sequence of these two classes makes sense to do them in the order but it's not a mandate by uh, ic agile at all and uh, just like the enterprise agile coaching track uh, there is a path towards uh, the export competence-based certification um, along this track um, delivery management is the next it's the next track uh, this is for those uh, uh, managers project managers and so forth who are primarily in organizations dealing with uh the delivery side of things and there's agile project man uh, management which is a foundational class there as well as program and portfolio management uh, classes uh, these are est established professional certifications in this track and there is an expert level designation should somebody choose to pursue that as well so the last four uh, tracks that I want to cover within the IC Agile purview, um, uh, the Agile Coaching, we looked at the Enterprise Agile Coaching. There's also team level Agile Coaching track. Uh, this is for those Scrum Masters trying to uh, seek advancement um, with, within, within, um, uh, within this chosen domain, want to be coaches, want to be uh, mentors and so forth. Uh, so this track might be appropriate for them. And there's two classes there, um, as well as an expert um, uh, designation. Um, <clears throat> I see Agile also offers a very comprehensive uh, learning program for the more technically oriented uh, team members. Uh, the Agile engineering track is primarily focused towards the software developers, the programmers, uh, technical managers, uh, and development leads, and so forth, uh, which exposes the audience to what it means to, uh, to deliver software and write software uh, within the Agile context. So um, practices such as CI, CD, uh, extreme programming practices are all explored. Um, so, and there's two training, uh, learning tracks, uh, Agile programming and Agile software design. And there's an expert designation there as well. Um, IC Agile also provides a unique track for uh, the quality professionals, testers, test automation engineers, and all those um, interested in pursuing uh, learning objectives within the Agile testing track. Again, there's the foundational Agile testing uh, course, which lays the, the ground for what it means to test within the Agile context, what is an Agile testing mindset. Um, and then there's the more uh, test automation focused track, which is the ICP ATA. 
And uh, much like the other ones, uh, there is also an ex expert designation available for those who, who seek it. Last but not least, one of the newer uh, feathers uh, within the IC Agile um, uh, roster of, 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 of learning tracks is the DevOps track. And where we, are, we have, uh, again, two um, learning tracks, uh, the foundations of DevOps appropriate for uh, really all of the team members uh, because it exposes the audience to a common language as to what it means, uh, what DevOps really means. We're going to talk, uh, talk about, uh, of course, the technical aspects and the automation aspects, but perhaps also uh, some of the mindset uh, aspects as well. So a pretty comprehensive set of learning objectives, which can be found on their website or the PDF that uh, we'll share with you. Uh, so Foundations of DevOps is the only uh, class that's currently available within this track, uh, but um, I see Agile is absolutely working on the learning objectives for the implementing DevOps, which tends to be a little more technical in nature, but the learning objectives are still being um, ironed out and it's coming soon. Uh, as is the expert designation, it's on the radar, it's not out yet. So this is, uh, these are the eight or nine tracks within the IC Agile uh, umbrella of uh, learning objectives. Questions? Yeah, so we definitely have a decent amount of questions to get through, but before we do that, uh, just so that we respect everybody's time here, I did want to go ahead and just say thank you guys so much for attending this webinar. Uh, we hope that we got to answer most of your questions and we'll get to the rest of them in just a second here. Hope that you enjoyed the presentation today. Um, and we, we know that navigating these courses can definitely be tricky sometimes, especially if you have no idea where to start. Uh, but luckily, all of our presenters today and many others from the Lifespeed family have an incredible amount of Agile knowledge um, and would be more than happy to work with you to help design your own roadmap. Uh, we also offer many of the courses that we discussed today. And if you are interested in taking any of those courses, uh, please reach out to us. We have some discounts available and we'd be happy to help you walk through those as well. Um, our next live webinar is February 16th at 11 a.m. with Roland Coyar and Layla Rao on the business agility topic of impact mapping. Uh, details and a registration link will come to you after we close. And while we're on the topic of business agility, Lightspeed will be offering an IC Agile accredited course in business agility foundations at this year's business agility conference in New York City that's coming up in March. Um, that particular certification is kind of the, the gatekeeper for learning journeys in the newly expanded business agility track. Like Raj said, that includes um, agile leadership, marketing, talent, and a couple other things as well. Um, and as far as agile leadership goes, we are planning our third session for the Agile Leadership Academy on March 12th and 13th. This session is going to focus on lean product management and design and will, of course, include that site visit to a company that currently practices Agile methods um, and the full day workshop after that. So more details and registration coming to you after we close. In events land, we are already preparing for Lean Agile 2018. That's our own niche conference. It's a one day affair with two tracks of content. This year's theme is Agile Engineering and DevOps. Um, so if you wanna check out anything from last year or anything that's coming up this year, visit leanagildc.com and give us a shout at lsevents at lifespeed.com if you're interested in speaking or sponsoring for 2018. And if you're interested in digging a little deeper on anything that we have covered today, links to the recording um, and our contact information will come to you shortly after we close. Um, as always, we'll continue to take some additional questions for a little bit here. So if you want to stay and ask anything else, we'll be available. Uh, also, be sure to check out our website for the latest information and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for live updates on upcoming webinars, events, and of course, our training schedule. So thank you guys again for joining us. We hope to see you next time and we will go ahead and open up to questions. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping things here. Uh, a couple of you have asked about the SEUs. If you're wanting to claim this webinar for an SEU, it is um, able to be claimed under category E for uh, independent learning for one credit there. 
Um, all right, so we'll go right into most of these questions. The first one um, for the IC Agile paths, are there exams for these? Uh, no, there are no exams. Um, the, most of the the validation is is uh, of competency and having met the learning objectives is done in class by the member organization um, uh, offering the class. Except the only exception is what I'd mentioned is if you wanted to um, for the agile fundamentals, if you didn't want to take the class and say, hey, I, have, I already have agile experience, uh, you can take an exam just to get the ICP designation. So beyond that, all the other classes uh, no, most of that is done within the class by the member organization offering the class. All right. And uh, the next one for IC Agile is, is there a good way or a right or wrong way to navigate the IC Agile classes? There are just so many. Uh, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Um, it, 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 it can be challenging. Uh, what I love about IC Agile is the breadth, um, but also with all of these choices, it, it becomes very hard to determine what, what to take. Uh, I think uh, we can absolutely work with the individual whoever asked the question to, uh, to, to further explore that based on the domain. I think the fact that it's domain specific makes it a little easier, but it's still uh, can be pretty complex trying to navigate uh, what class to take. We can work with them one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. All right, thanks for that. Um, moving on to some general questions here. How do these certifications help make me more marketable? Yeah, this is Arlen, I'll speak to that. <clears throat> you know, I would say uh, two, two basic ways. Uh, the first is that they are, uh, some of these designations are these days quite often used as recruiting filters uh, by, by, by recruiters, right? That is that, for instance, if you're going to be an Agile coach, uh, there are very few places that wouldn't ask for a foundational uh, Scrum Master or equivalent designation. So I think there's that, that is getting in the door for one of these roles, uh, probably you'd at least want the base level certifications just to say that you've uh, proved that you've got some interest and that you're willing to invest your time and money in it. Uh, I would say on the if once you've gotten in the door, of course, it's it remains a differentiator potentially. So lots and lots of people have the Scrum Master designation right now. Uh, so if you're going in and you're competing for a job alongside a bunch of other people who also have it, uh, then of course it might give you a bit of a leg up if you were able to say, I've got, you know, the, the tertiary designation is a CSP SM here, and I'm one of fewer than a hundred in the world. Um, so I think really it's that it's it's exclusivity. It is saying that you have enough. Uh, you know, a, a, a enough interest in a role basically to invest in it and that, you know, you, you've, you're a continuous learner. I think those are all things that, that look good to employers. That is a well-rounded answer, Arlen. <laughs> um, all right, next question here. Would you recommend my whole team have the same certification or different ones? Um, I, I can take that as well, and uh, you know, colleagues here can jump in as appropriate. What I would say is this really depends very much on what you're doing exactly. Um, one of the benefits of having people take uh, any given class, honestly, together, or say a team taking class together, is that they get the same message at the same time from the same source, and they can also participate in some of the you know, mindset shifting exercises and other such things at the same time, and, and hence take the journey together. Uh, so I view you know, having people take the same class, there's that perspective that it's useful because it uh, everybody has the same experience. But of course, if you've got people who are in different roles, it's not uncommon to see uh, perhaps something of a hybrid approach. So I'll, I'll just give it as, as an example, the way that we typically do, um, you know, what we've historically called our, our quick starts or uh, kind of, you know, able, able to get into a new client. Let's say that you've got, uh, you know, you're launching a couple of new Agile teams. So you've, of course, got Scrum Masters and product owners and team members and uh, perhaps some leaders, and you'd like to educate all these folks. Uh, a common way to set it up might be to have a high-level orientation class, say, you know, half a day, perhaps a day in, in duration. And that would get everybody on the same page about what agility is and how perhaps it's being adopted at the organization, uh, you know, the big picture sort of stuff. And then perhaps the remainder of the week, you would go into various breakout sessions uh, a little bit more aligned perhaps by role or function. Uh, so the product owners might, and, and perhaps designers and analysts and so on, uh, on, the, on that 
creative side of the equation might go into product owner classes and the coaches and so on, scrum master classes, uh, the developers, CSDs, and so on, right? So, you know, I, I think that's that's a common way you'll see it at organizations is you do some of the training together and you do some of it uh, deeper dives separately. All right, and kind of off of that question, I think you answered it a little bit. Uh, somebody's asking, what do you think are the best certifications to have? On my team, we have business analysts, testers, uh, regular team members, developers, et cetera, et cetera, sorry. Um, it, I'll, I'll take a crack at it. It's a little bit of a difficult question to answer because it depends on, to some degree, their, their level of experience for one. Um, what I'd say is at this point, all of these frameworks, all three of them have uh, a pretty good breadth of offerings from the novice to the advanced. Uh, I'd say for the role specific stuff, probably still IC Agile has a bit of a leg up there for some of the more, uh, you know, if, if you will, some of the, the specific Role. roles. Yeah, like a tester. There's um, you don't have tester as such classes from the Scrum Alliance or SAFE. Um, same goes for business analysts, right? There's not specifically uh, analyst focused classes and some of the others. Um, and so, you know, I think in that instance, it's, it's not that uncommon to see a bit of a hybrid, you know, and, and I think, say between, um, you, you, could, you could quite honestly and easily, and it wouldn't be causing any major problems to combine all three of these in a company. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you why, because the Scrum Alliance is best known for the uh, if you will, the team level training, right? They, they, they've introduced some higher level scaling things just recently, but they, they don't really have a lot of a reputation at that yet. Uh, certainly most people would, would still turn more towards uh, something like SAFE uh, or perhaps less, the, the large scale scrum uh, for, for the scaling. So you'd have, you know, you could do both. You could have your team folks trained and say certified scrum master and product owner. You could have a few pivotal transformation leaders trained in the leading SAFE courses. Um, and then you could have some of your testers and your uh, engineers take some of the advanced IC Agile courses. Um, I'll also note in particular the business agility side of IC Agile is particularly interesting because that can uh, apply to departments outside of the technology ones like marketing and sales and so on, right? There are a lot of classes that are more uh, jargon free and not really oriented towards engineering work. Um, and that can be nice when you're trying to roll this out more broadly. Yeah, I, I, just to add to what Arlen just said, uh, there's many organizations that we work with uh, essentially do just that. Uh, a lot of the organizations uh, that we are involved with have uh, adopted Scrum as their uh, Agile framework. So to that end, um, the foundational Agile slash Scrum knowledge is, is delivered through the Scrum Alliance's uh, Certified Scrum Master designation within these organizations. But once they have the, uh, the foundational knowledge, uh, the role specific things, the organizations have essentially reached out to us for specific uh, testing, specific uh, uh, certifications, or uh, programmer specific designations. And they've sort of leaned on the IC Agile's path because they have a well-established set of learning objectives for each of these uh, role specific um, uh, uh, courses. So, um, so that's that's something that we see increasingly organizations do, where they're mixing and matching uh, from various uh, certification bodies. All right, thank you guys for that answer. Uh, next question here: If I have experience in Scrum, can I take the CSM and a CSM back to back, or do I have to wait the full twelve months before taking it? Yes, you can. Yeah, put simply, all, all they're expecting is that you have the year of experience, but it does not have to come in between the classes. And the same is true between the advanced Scrum Master and the uh, CSP level for, for all of them, for the product owner, for the Scrum Master, and eventually it'll be the same way for the CSD. You just, uh, in to, to put it another way, to take the, the top level class, the CSPSM or the CSPSO or PO, uh, you need at least two years of experience. If you have that and you're able to demonstrate it, um, and of course, you've taken the previous level classes, then you can take that third level. So you can take all three right back to back if you had two years of experience and you're able to find them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and the last question that we have here um, is, and this is, I think, appropriate, uh, what classes do you offer? So we offer the uh, most of the Scrum Alliance classes. Uh, at this point, we have the Advanced Scrum Master is actually out in the market. We are in the process of building the advanced product owner, and that will be out uh, within the next few months. We uh, currently 
do not have the guide level certification classes, the CSP uh, SM and the CSP PO. Uh, though I will say we could quite easily work with someone to, to get them those certifications at this point if there's someone who's, who's super keen to have them. Uh, you might have noted that there are literally zero of either of those in the world today. So <laughs> we're not the only ones not offering it. It's a, it's a very rare thing to find yet because it's so new. Um, but I think you'll see more of those cropping up over the course of this year. Uh, on the safe side? On the safe side, we offer uh, leading safe. So the SA certification also implementing safe. We offer that a few times too throughout the quarters. Um, public classes, and then for private classes, we offer the other classes we I showed you as well. IC Agile. Uh, on the IC Agile side, <coughs> uh, we have classes on the business agility track. We have classes on the Agile testing uh, track. We have classes on the DevOps track, uh, as well as the delivery management uh, side. And we're continuing to uh, um, add um, more along the different uh, uh, tracks, not just the foundational classes, but also the advanced track. So right now we have we have classes in five of the eight uh, tracks. And I'll just mention I uh, on the Scrum Alliance side, of course, we also offer the leadership courses that I mentioned. That is uh, the Cal Level One. We offer a two-day public class in our Herndon office uh, for that. All right, and I'll add too that um, the Agile Leadership Academy is year year round, uh, and you can jump in at any point. You can take all of them um, throughout the year, um, and more information on all of these classes uh, is available on our website at lifespeed.com. If you are interested in taking them, uh, like I said earlier, if you have no idea where to start here, please feel free to reach out to uh, either of us. Um, and we'd be more than happy to walk you through what might work for you uh, in your career. So once again, I wanted to say thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to our presenters. We enjoyed having you. Um, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.